to go out landscape painting, plein air painting today, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about what's going into my um, <laughs> my box. I don't know my bag, my easel box, <laughs> and uh, and a bag. I guess that's usually what I bring, um, and a hat. So uh, um, first thing is um, if you're landscape painting, um, and even actually sometimes when I paint in the house, I wear a hat. Um, if you have a white ceiling, um, there are certain circumstances um, where, and depending on where your windows are, where even in your house, your hat can actually block some um, um, un unwanted uh, glare to your, to your eyes when you're trying to concentrate. So kind of weird, but yeah. So I'm wearing my hat to remind me to mention that hats are extremely important. Um, not just for sunburns, but um, just for being able to see when you're outside painting. Okay, um, second point is that there are different palette choices and color choices that you might make depending on what sort of painting you're doing. Um, so plein air painting, painting outside, um, you may choose different colors than you use for a studio um, studio painting. Um, at least, you know, because I'm kind of more of a classical painter, um, I tend to use... Um, darker kind of earth tones um, and I stay away from really artificial looking um, colors. Uh, outside I break that a little bit because there are some really bright greens that can't seem to be gotten any other way. Um, also purples are, are can be very difficult to mix if they're um, if they're really bright ones. So anyway so uh, okay let's let's get to it. So um, first thing First thing, um, first three things, hat, uh, apron, which I'm not wearing, but um, my apron, I load up with some paper towels that are ready to go and um, big paint tubes or things that are, that don't fit in my paint box. Let me see here. Oh, you get to see my messy, my mess in here. I have like a mountain of books stacked up there and stuff, but that's okay. Okay. So um, if you have, if you're serious about this, so, um, well, okay, if you, if you aren't sure if you're, let's see, if you aren't sure if you're serious yet about painting um, plein air, then the thing to do is um, take a, like a very small, like either get a small painter's box um, that, that leans, I have one somewhere, it, it's almost like, it's almost this small. It was my grandfather's. It's almost this small, but it does have a, a like this will will stop. It will kind of lock in place and enable you to lean a very small panel um, against it. Um, anyway, so that would be the very first thing. If you don't know, then you're almost gonna, you can almost do like a painting in your lap as long as you're wearing um, an apron. Um, another point would be, um, don't wear white shirts. I am, um, I'll probably go change before I actually go out. Don't wear white shirts. They also can kind of glare into your painting. Um, don't wear anything like hot pink for the same reason. No, no really bright colors. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah. So if you, if you're beyond the, the sampling at stage and you want oil paint outside, then I st I'm pretty old fashioned and I have a, uh, I think it's just a half box. It's a half box Julian um, easel and it comes with, I also have backpack straps so I can um, wear it on my back if I want to kind of go further away from the car. Um, some people, they're like ultra light ones now. So, you know, that's something when you get, you know, I, I, I do it kind of, it's not my primary painting uh, way of painting. So, um, and I just like, I'm very aesthetic and I like the, the old wood. Okay, so now I'm going to um, show in the box. Um, all right, so I do preload it in here. This is um, the palette that, came, that comes with, the, with this kind of a box. Um, and it folds. Um, Notice there is a tiny, tiny gap here. Um, so sometimes if I'm, if I'm, 
if I'm lazy, I don't know if that that's not really the right word, but there are times where I just close this with the paint and then I kind of clean it up at home. And sometimes if I'm not doing a big painting, I'll put blobs of paint right along here so that when I close it, they don't just, they don't smear around. Um, and it's just a little easier to clean, but that's just a super weird thing. Okay, so that, that's, that goes in um, again at the end. You'll need some kind of, um, a thinner for whatever kind of painting you do, um, studio or plein air. I recommend Gamsol um, and Odorless. Uh, and that's um, used very little, um, but that's for another video. Okay, um, and then you can get like a really tight sealing little jar. It has to seal really well. You do not want thinner, odorless or not leaking. So um, try to keep the thinner, whatever container you have, try to keep it upright in your car and upright um, when you're carrying it somewhere. So um, that means I don't usually put it in here, actually. I usually um, I usually have it separate. Uh, but you know, you could technically, I think it is, it is made with a seal, so it, it probably would, would work. Okay, now I have a small bag, um, dog potty bag in this case, that I keep in here, and this is for the end of the painting session. Um, then I put my dirty brushes, um, I wrap my dirty brushes, the heads of them in the bag like this, um, just to keep them, so I just kind of go like, like that. Um, that way I know which ones I need to wash and which ones maybe I didn't use. Um, and make sure when you put your brushes in, make sure that they face uh, so the bristles are up toward the handle so that when the box is tipped and you're walking, your, your bristles aren't all being pushed at the bottom. Um, kind of a silly little thing, but yeah, you can put this at either end. Okay, um, so uh, I travel pretty lightly, um, probably not as lightly as I could. Um, and one thing a person could do is if you're going to do a lot of plein air, you could buy small paints, small, the smaller paint tubes. Let me see if I, I think I have one in here to show you. Yeah, here's a little Rembrandt, um, a little Rem Rembrandt cadmium red, uh, and it's the smaller size tube. Um, and this is oleo gel. This is the main medium that I use. I highly recommend it. Um, some artists use, um, Oh my gosh, Gam, what is it? Not Gamvar, it's a Gamblin product. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to put it in the comments. I can't remember what it is all of a sudden, but, but um, there's another product anyway that, that, that people use, and it's similar. It's a, it's um, um, a, like a, 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 oh my gosh, wow, I can't think today. Um, an Alkid. Excuse me, it's an Alkid. Uh, liquin, that's it, that's it. Liquin gets used a lot. I really don't like the smell of liquin. Um, and, you know, it's very, very shiny. Um, I really like oleo gel. But, um, and, and you can also use just any any light oil, like a, a, any painting medium oil that you find in an art supply store. But you just, you know, always use, use it very sparingly, okay? Um, all right, so... My base colors, no matter what I'm doing, I do use black outside. I don't know if you know, but the impressionist um, said no black was allowed when they were doing um, plein air painting. But uh, anyway, so my base colors are are the whites like this. I have lead white. I kind of go back and forth. Well, I paint on panel a lot, so I'm a big fan of Permalba. Um, We'll have another video on choosing uh, the color white because it's a little controversial. Um, but um, I've never had any trouble with the discoloration of Permalba. And um, I paint a lot on panel, and, and that's what some people don't like, that it has has um, zinc white in it, which is known to crack a little more like on a, on a canvas. But, you know, between you and me, I don't know how many years it would take before that would actually happen. So these are my base colors. You can almost think of it. I mean, they're basically like your um, tone setters, you know, your your darkest darks, your, your mid-tones, and your highlights. Okay, so you do need those three colors in whatever form you want, whatever brand you want. And then beyond that, um, 
I am used to, a lot of people use ultramarine blue, and so that's fine. I am very used to cobalt blue, which is a quicker dryer and it's a little lighter. Um, I just prefer it. I, I got used to it a long time ago. And so um, have a blue, whichever one you choose. If you have enough room, you can bring both. So you, um, you can bring more than one. You can bring more than one of, of these colors, okay? Um, this is a shortcut color, which means it's just something I can't. I, I, I can't mix anything that's this bright. And this I do find in nature, at least here in Michigan, a lot of really, really bright green. This is a cadmium. Oh, it's a cadmium, but the, the color name is completely worn off. Um, I would say it's a cadmium green light is my guess, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So I use that. Um, some of these are kind of weird. I'm not sure why that's in there. Um, okay, then you need a bright red. Uh, I traditionally use vermilion. Um, but you can use a cadmium red medium or cadmium red. I think a cadmium red light, actually, if you have that, would be better. Um, and this is great for warming up black in the shadows. Um, I often bring a an earthy red. It can be kind of whatever you want. This is Venetian red, but um, there are lots of lots of choices really, uh, as long as it's just kind of a quick drying earth color. Um, the quick drying earthy red is is important, and like I said, there are a lot of choices that can work. Okay, um, I draw uh, a lot with raw umber. This is like the first stage of most of my drawings. It's when I separate the dark from the light in a composition. Um, and it dries very quickly, especially because I usually have it thinned a little bit um, with the thinner. And um, so this is how I kind of I whip out a drawing that will guide the rest of my painting. Um, uh, more on that later. Okay, so beyond that, now I'm kind of moving into uh maybe the less essential colors let's see did i miss anything super essential let me see here Just gonna take these guys out um, and add them in um depending on the time of year uh and conditions then um a really bright yellow is good um Another color that I use just all the time a lot is a, uh, it is Naples yellow. Um, for outside, like the Naples yellow deep. Um, it has a little bit of white in it. So it is it's not like a, it's not a trans, transparent, really clean yellow, if that makes sense. It's almost like it's pre-mixed with, with white. Well, it, and off it, it, it often is. I mean, it's got a little, sometimes it can have lead white in it, but probably most often it doesn't have lead anymore. Anyway, I find this an extremely useful color for highlights um, in, in grasses. Um, and it also has a little more body than some colors. Um, again, because of that, that little white in the admixture there. Okay, this combination makes a very nice green, and that is... Indian yellow and um, manganese blue, wherever it is. Manganese blue is like a, it's a very warm blue. It's, it's like a darker, well, this is manganese blue hue. But where is the dark manganese? Hmm. You see, am I confused here? Prussian blue, I'm sorry. Prussian blue, that's what I meant. Okay, so ignore what I just said. It's Indian yellow and Prussian blue. It makes a very, um, a very deep, what I'd call clean, meaning um, pretty high chroma, meaning meaning not, not a, not, it doesn't really feel like black and it doesn't feel like white in, in the mixture at all. I guess that's the best way to explain it. I think those are very useful colors. Um, at this point, I guess maybe we'd add a brighter, like a, another green, um, like a like a viridian green. This is this is Nicosia green earth, 
which is a little bit similar. I, and I think I would have stopped. I, I think I wish I hadn't mentioned these yet because I think the colors I've mentioned are the most basic. Um, and they're, they're raw umber, black, white, um, yellow ochre, which is a great mid yellow, a, a vibrant green, a red of some kind, kind of a lightish red, um, an earth red, quick drying-ish kind of earth red, a blue of your choice, a kind of a brightish green of your choice, like Viridian would be a good option. Um, and for me, the Naples yellow is, a, is an essential. Um, this again depends on the time of year. So these are the less essential. Um, maybe the bright yellow is pretty essential, but um, but beyond that, then then now we would just you would just move into the kind of fun colors. Again, it's going to depend a little bit on what you're painting and what time of what time of year, um, because there are some times of year where you're outside that you're going to be using a much cooler palette. Like if you're up for winter painting, for example, um, then you then you might choose some other colors. Um, I'm not going to go into those today. Um, okay, very good. I hope that this is helpful. Um, oh, I guess one one word also about the support. Uh, support is another word for canvas and panel, um, whatever it is that you want to paint on. Um, I recommend, uh, well, I recommend knowing if you are painting, if you are, here, move this up. If you tend to paint thickly and have a trouble have trouble with your paint getting muddy, or if um, you're like a like a a frugal painter where you have trouble getting enough paint actually on the canvas, if you are the former and you tend to put on paint pretty thickly and um, you tend to get muddy colors, then painting on a canvas is a good idea. Um, I really have a hard time with commercial canvas just as it is. It is just so scratchy. Um, but some people, I think, you know, if you're kind of a, more of a beginner, maybe this is a good thing to just experiment on. But um, as quickly as you can, um, if you have to use something cheap like this, um, and I do buy these sometimes like for, for studies that where I'm just working on color schemes and it, it's not going to be sold or anything. Um, then these, these sorts of things, it still helps to put another coat of acrylic gesso, assuming this is acrylic um, priming, put some more gesso on. Um, otherwise, I'm a great proponent of, of panel. Um, this one I have already kind of gotten ready with some blue because it makes a nice color to, to, to um, paint over. Um, but I, I use ampersand panels a lot. I tend to be the frugal um, painter. And um, so I don't have a I don't have a problem with things going muddy and getting thick and out of control that way. Um, I'm going to show you this. This is just um, I think there's a video of me painting this beginning, and this is actually done from a photo, um, and and partially from imagination. But this shows the beginning of a painting where you just draw in brown, um, and then you know paint thickness will go on top of that. Um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, oh, not quite, not quite. I am sorry. Last thing though, um, you're going to have your apron on and your sunscreen, your bug spray and a roll of paper towels and a bag, a couple or a, a couple of just bags that you can use at the end as garbage bags for cleanup. So you wipe your brushes, um, you wipe your brushes off well, wipe your palette if you need to, wipe your hands. And then you have your own little, your garbage bag. Um, and okay, I do think that is it this time. Thanks for watching.